Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining into the webinar for Avia Global Health. We are very proud this week to present to you Gradient Health Systems and to feature their universal anesthesia machine. So just a couple quick things before we get started. So the general agenda here is to have a, a short presentation and demonstration of the equipment where you can learn more about the UAM. And then we will have a question and answer section after that. So as we move into that section, there's two different ways you can ask questions. So at any time throughout the presentation, you can ask a question, but what we will do is wait until the end of the presentation to answer them. So the first way you can do that is to click that hand icon, which allows you to raise your hand. At that point, I'll receive an alert, and then when you are called upon, we will unmute your microphone and allow you to ask that question directly. And then the second way you can do that is to type a question into that question section that you see on the right. It's a very easy way for you to type your question and then I will ask the question to the product team for you and the answer will come to you directly. So with that, I'd like to proudly introduce Lena, who is the VP of Market Strategy with Gradient Health Systems. And so I'm gonna go through um, the universal anesthesia machine um, really quickly. Um, and then take any questions, give you an overview of Gradient. Um, and I'm going to do a high-level overview, and then we can get into specifics if someone has more um, anesthesia focus or knows a little bit more about anesthesia. But just as a high-level um, overview of traditional anesthesia machines that I'm sure some of you are familiar with, um, they require external compressed oxygen, typically speaking, and electricity. And so as you may or may not know, but you should talk to customers about this and hospitals about this, is figuring out whether it's expensive for them to get oxygen um, cylinders, whether um, they're even able to get it at all. Very often they have to sort of ship it from the capital city to very rural hospitals and they have no access to external oxygen um, or often they have obviously shortages in electricity which make it um, very difficult to use a traditional anesthesia machine. So this machine was actually invented in Malawi um, several years ago. It is manufactured in the United Kingdom. It has CE certification as well. And so it, um, right now we are in, we will go through an overview of gradient. We're working in 23 countries, I believe. Um, and so really what we wanted to kind of go through is the very various modes. And so if you have oxygen cylinders or piped oxygen, as in any traditional machine, it can take that at the back of the machine. You can hook it up to an oxygen cylinder or piped oxygen. However, what's really unique about this machine is that that's your back, really. It comes with a built-in oxygen concentrator, which is down here. Um, it's built in here, and that is really unique to this machine. Um, and once you turn that on, you will hear it, so you'll know it's on. But basically, this is, if you don't have it to compress the oxygen, this will work um, really sort of endlessly as long as you have electricity. Um, if, for whatever reason, your electricity goes off, the machine immediately will go into the cylinder if you have that. It will go seamlessly switch over to the cylinder. The machine will continue to work then. If the hospital does not have electricity, the concentrator will not work, obviously. And if you don't have cylinders, the machine will still work. It's coming with kind of a third failure mode where it has draw over anesthesia built into it. And really what that means is it pulls in room air um, through this air inlet here, which is 21% oxygen, and you can continue um, your surgery through, um, and the patient will stay under um, through using the drawover mode up here. And then the minute you get electricity back again, this machine will, the concentrator will turn on. And so you'll see the machine kind of have these seamless way of going back and forth and adapting to the infrastructure at the hospital. Um, for those familiar with types of vapor um, anesthetic agents, the most frequently used one in most of, at least Sub-Saharan Africa, is halothane. Um, you have the option of halothane, isofluorine, and sevofluorine. And so it takes one vaporizer at a time due to the um, drawover mode, um, but you have the option of all three in order to purchase that. Um, and it's really important to talk to hospitals about what um, anesthetic agent they currently are using. Another interesting feature in here is you have the automatic ventilator, which is optional. Some hospitals that have shorter surgeries don't really need the automatic ventilator. You can 
manually ventilate patients through the surgery. However, a lot of hospitals opt for having the automatic ventilator, which is electrically driven. Most automatic ventilators are actually oxygen driven. We found more hospitals have access to electricity over oxygen. So we've made sure our automatic ventilator is um, electrically driven. It also has a six hour battery backup. Um, in case um, you lose electricity, this will continue to happen. Even if you lose battery and electricity, again, you always have the option to manually ventilate the patient. So you can really get through any surgery um, under any circumstance as a result. Oh, something I didn't mention earlier is you also have this um, oxygen monitor, which has a 10 hour battery backup. And this is specifically important for the draw over mode um, and it allows you to measure the amount of oxygen that's going into the patients. It's a safety monitor that we've added um, that helps patient monitor um, the patients so they are not hypoxic. Um, part of Gradient's mission, which we'll get into a little bit, a little bit more about what Gradient is, is we really want to promote safe surgery, um, broadly speaking, safe anesthesia. And so we provide a patient monitor. With, it's a four function patient monitor with every one of our purchases. Um, to make sure that the machine has um, really everything you need to perform surgery safely. Um, this also has a six hour battery backup. And so that's kind of the general overview of the UAM. And really the whole idea behind it is you're really able to continue any surgery um, at any, under any circumstances um, and continue with surgery as you can and lose electricity and oxygen. So that's the overview of the machine. I guess we can talk a little bit more about Gradient as well. Um, just a little bit about Gradient Health Systems. We're actually a nonprofit medical device company. Um, and really what that means is we sell our machine, but everything, um, we sell it at cost. Any um, profits or income we get is put into service and training as well. And we're really highly focused on service and training of each machine. We're based here in New York. Um, and our real mission is to improve surgery um, through technology, um, training, and service. And so we're currently in 20, 22 countries, um, about to go into 23, I think. We've been around since 2011, and we work um, really heavily. Most of our base is sort of in, well, I guess now it's split between East and West Africa, but most, um, we have you outside of Sub-Saharan Sub Africa. So we have a base currently in Nepal, Haiti, um, Cambodia, and Laos, and the rest of the countries are in, are in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, so part of what it looks like to really focus on service and training is every time a distributor or anyone sells a UAM, what you get with each machine is a three-year warranty, and that includes ongoing, I mean, that includes a preventative maintenance visit every year um, from a local technician. So we work really closely with local biomedical engineers and local anesthetists. And so this, the warranty covers service and spare parts, which are often either locally based. We do a spare parts depot locally or regionally. So it's a really um, quick um, turnaround on service issues. Additionally, um, we provide training with every single um, installation. And so that training is a two-day training that's clinical and technical. So we'll send a MD anesthesiologist to each hospital to do a didactic session clinical with, with the clinicians at the hospital, as well as a session in the OR, a proctored session in the OR. And we send a biomedical technician or engineer to train the staff on preventative maintenance and some basic, at least, troubleshooting um, or repairs, but most importantly, we provide 24-7 customer support to our distributors and to our customers directly in order to provide um, troubleshooting and diagnosis support so we can make sure the machine is working at all times. And so that's where um, what we do as a nonprofit, that's where we spend a lot of our time and effort and how we work closely with in-country distributors and partners is to make sure they're able to provide service and training to the customers on an ongoing basis. Um, and so that's really the general overview of how Gradient operates. The UAM right now is our first product. Um, we are starting to look into other products, which will um, certainly launch via um, this platform as well once they are ready, but this is our uh, primary product right now. And so that's kind of the Gradient overview. Great. Thank you very much, Lena. So now is a chance for everyone to ask questions. I don't see any on the questions board yet. 
Um, but it'll take you a few minutes just to type in your questions, or again, if you want to raise your hand, you can do that instead. Um, so we have one question that's come in. Okay. So in case the machine is sold to Kenya, can you send a trainer to Kenya? So, and this would really apply to any country where yes. someone has purchased. The question would be, can you have in-country training? So all of our training actually happens in country. For specifically Kenya, yes, we have trainers both on the technical and clinical side who can go there. Um, what we try to do in every country is have it actually um, be local uh, technicians and clinicians that are from that country. Of course, um, you can't do that all the time. And some countries are new. But in any situation, no matter where you are, um, we will provide the same level of training um, no matter what country you're in. But Kenya specifically, we do already have a presence there. Great. Thank you for that question and the answer. Uh, I don't see any other questions popping up, so we'll give everyone just a moment to collect your notes and see if there are any other questions. So I guess one question that often comes up is specifically just about spare parts. Um, is it something that's very easy to source? And then what would be uh, the general way to learn, be trained on that as yep. well? So the machine itself actually comes with a few spare parts with it. Um, well, the oxygen, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> um, there's certain spare parts that come with it that are really easy to swap out that you could do at the hospital level. So we provide that um, with every package, and that'll be on site at the hospital. In countries where we have about 10 or more machines, we'll establish a spare parts depot, um, usually in the capital. And so it's very easy for our technicians and distributors to be able to provide those spare parts. Um, otherwise, we do ship them from the UK right now if you're in a country that we don't have a strong presence or somewhere regionally. But the plan is there are certain parts that are easier to source, some are a little bit more specific, um, but we try and have it, it as local as possible. Okay. And for everyone listening, if there are any questions specifically about pricing, you can follow up with me after the webinar. And the, my contact information is there on the screen. So we can connect you with the correct pricing based on your needs or with the distributor in your market. Um, so the next question we have on here is, are there consumables? Um, the main consumable is uh, obviously the anesthetic agent, um, whether it be the halothane or isofluorine, that's the main consumable of the machine. Um, it comes with sort of a training kit. So it comes with two breathing circuits. Um, and some filters, and those are ongoing consumables. I mean, the circuits can be cleaned out, but the bacteria filters are consumables that are um, recommended for the machine, but the main um, consumable would be the anesthetic agent. Okay. And then what would be the requirements for power? For power? Um, so is there any kind of voltage or requirements that are needed? Um, not necessarily requirements. What we do recommend is that the machine comes, uh, you attach a voltage stabilizer to it. So most of our distributors will sell that with it. It usually costs about two to three hundred dollars and that manages the sort of fluctuations. It is built in with an ABS that protects the machine. And so if it is to, if, without the voltage stabilizer that will shut down the oxygen concentrator okay. to protect it. Um, so the, what the voltage stabilizer does is it allows the oxygen concentrator to work for a longer period of time. Okay, now is the time for any other questions that anyone might have. We'll give everyone just a few moments. I'm not seeing any additional questions in just yet. And then before we finish, I'll do one more walk around of the machine with a little bit closer video so you can see some of the more detailed components involved as well. So where is, the next question is, um, where is the ma machine manufactured? Um, it is manufactured in the United Kingdom, in the UK. Um, we are a US-based company, but our manufacturer is in the UK. I saw one person raise their hand, but then lowered their hand. So if you're willing to ask your question, you can either type it in specifically, or you can raise your hand and, and ask that directly to Lena as well. So. And, and part of, sorry, I just want to answer the manufacturing question. Part of it being manufactured in 
um, the UK so we can have the CE certification on it as well. So are there references from customers specifically in Kenya, but really across other networks as well, references of users? Yes, to both. I mean, we have uh, users in Kenya and places where you can see it in Kenya, and, and we have a, a quite a few users, um, I guess like five hospitals that are using it in Kenya, but um, several other references in Tanzania and Uganda and nearby countries as well. So again, if anyone has any questions specifically about references, you can send me an email and I can requ request those specifically for you. And any other questions you have, I have listed in the chat section the product page on the VIA Global Health site, which has quite a bit of information regarding specifications, any brochures, manuals, pictures, detail about the benefits of the product as well. So if you have any questions, they should be able to be answered there. But if not, you're always welcome to contact me directly. Okay, okay, we do have one hand raiser here. Let's see if we can, um, Adam, we'll, we'll unmute your line and see if we can get you to ask your question here. Yes, please, I'm calling from Ghana. Okay, I wanted to ask about the vaporizer. Yes. Ask I can see the machine is having only one vaporizer. Is, is there a way of where you can change it if you want to do a case that is contraindicated to the agent present? Um, I, I missed a little bit of that, but I think I, I know what your question is. Yes, um, that is a, a big difference between a traditional machine. There is one vaporizer, and that is in order okay. to enable a draw over mode of it. Um, and so to have that option, you only would have one vaporizer. However, we do provide options um, okay. for different types of vaporizers that can be swapped out um, between okay. isofluorine, sevofluorine, and halothane. Okay. At this point, it's not quick enough to do it in the middle of a case. It would have to be in between cases. Um, okay. And so it would not be in the, during a case, but um, in between cases. All right. Does that answer your question? Thank you very much. Not of course. Have, we've answered it. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you have any other questions while we have you unmuted? Okay. Um, just I want to know the pricing modality. The pricing, how, how pricing, if one needs some, how, how much can you get it? Okay. Yeah. So for the pricing, if you would actually just send me an email, I can respond to you after the webinar. And we can discuss specifically for Ghana. I'll do that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Good questions there. I don't see any other questions. So what I will do is just wrap up the webinar. But again, if anyone has any questions following this, you're welcome to send me an email and I can route those directly through Lena or if we can answer them on our end on the product page. We're also happy to do that, to give you that information as quickly as possible. So with that, I want to thank Lena, and I also want to thank everyone on the line for participating, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much.